What's up guys, this episode we have a lot to cover, but we are building a nested form with rails using Vue.js. So instead of using something like Cocoon or building out your own JavaScript thing to handle this, we're gonna be building a form like this where we can create a team and the players can be added dynamically. So we'll have Chris, we'll have, uh, let's say Bob, and if we hit save team, that's going to save it to the database and we can see Chris and Bob is in there. And if we were to remove an existing record, we actually get this cool undo functionality where we can hit remove and if it knows that it was already in the database before, then it will show you an undo um, and you can undo that. Or you can go and for example, edit an existing record and add somebody to the team. And if you decide anytime on create or edit that you want to remove someone, if they aren't saved to the database, it will just plain old remove them, but the existing records in the database will actually um, be flagged as removed. So that is pretty interesting. If we hit save team, we will see that Bob2 is the only player on the GoRails team now. So this is a lot to cover because it's a fairly complicated subject, but let's dive in real quick to look at our controller and our models for this. So this is all standard from the Rails side. All of this is very standard uh, nested attributes and nested form stuff. So we have a team has many players. Um, and the main thing here is that accepts nested attributes for players is going to allow us to create a team and submit player details alongside of it. And it allow destroy as true is going to allow us to destroy them just like you saw in the example. And with our uh, player model, there's nothing at all special here. Players have a name, they have a position. Um, you'll notice I didn't include it in the example, but they do have a position so you could add in other things like uh, there are a point guard or center and their number is 24 or whatever. Like you can go ahead and add in those extra attributes as you might like, but we're just gonna keep it simple for this example because it is a lot of stuff to, con uh, to talk about. So our Teams controller is the last piece that is in Rails. This is all very standard stuff so far. We have a team scaffold actually for all of this. The important piece here is that we want the JSON response to render uh, an okay response for when it gets created or uh, updated. So we wanna make sure that it was successful in both cases and then our location for each of these is going to give us the URL back that we can redirect to after it was successful. So we're gonna make sure that we have that if it was successful and if it was unsuccessful, we get an unprocessable entity response back. So our JavaScript uh, Ajax XHR request is going to receive a failed um, post in both cases and then it will return errors back and we can go ahead and then use those in Vue.js to display the errors. And last but not least, we have uh, added the players attributes and some attributes for the players to the strong params method. So this namely is the same as normal except it's the nested ones and we include the ID so that we can update existing records like you saw with Bob2 and we have underscore destroy. So for existing records, we can look it up with the ID and then we can call destroy on it if this flag was set to be true. So all of our rail stuff here is set up to be very standard, but it's our JavaScript and our form template that is going to be where all of the work is. So let's dive into that. Now this application I have set up with Webpacker. So we've used Webpacker install to install Webpacker. And then we've also used the Webpacker install view to get this hello view example. Now we're gonna just modify this a little bit and we're gonna change that from DOM content loaded to Turbolinks load. And then from there, we're gonna get rid of the way that it sets itself up and we are going to do a few different things. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we grab that element for the uh, form. So this is gonna be document.get element by ID uh, team form and we'll set that to a variable and if element is not equal to null, then we will set this up. So basically we will set up view 
only if that element exists on the page. So any other pages that we might have that doesn't have the Teams form, this code will run, but it will not actually initialize the view element. Uh, so here we will add element there. And rather than using the template inside of a single file view app, we're gonna actually implement the template inside of the HTML form inside of the Rails view instead of putting that in our JavaScript. So we can get rid of this components as well and the import app because we don't need those for this situation. The other thing that we want to do is we want to import Turbolinks adapter from view Turbolink, so that node module I made. And then we also wanna import view resource from view resource so that we have uh, a way to send Ajax requests that are a little bit easier. And then last but not least there, we want to say view.use view resource, which will initialize all of that. So the last thing that we need to do here then is go into our application and say yarn add. Uh, view turbolinks and view resource and that's going to add those two to our packages.json and set those up so that we have them as accessible then. The other thing that I want to do is when we have set up view resource I'm going to set up http.headers.common x csrf token and we're going to set that document or that equal to document query selector, and we're gonna grab the standard uh, meta name equals CSRF token uh, meta tag, and we're gonna get attribute content. So we'll have access to that CSRF token that shows up on every page, and we'll be able to submit that across um, as part of the Ajax request automatically. So the other thing we need to do is add mixins, turbolinks, adapter here inside of the view app. And we can actually go into the form itself in Teams and start building things out here. So what we really need to be able to do is two different things here. We need the form to have that ID. And then we also need, when you're editing a team, we need to have some JSON that view, view can load so that it knows the initial state. When you're creating a new team, there is no initial state because everything is empty already. And that is gonna give us the ability then when we go to edit, we have the team and all of the players that we can load up into view as the state and then the view app can render all the form fields necessary to do that. So what we're gonna do is really just get rid of, actually let's just get rid of this entire form. Now there is some other options you could do. For example, you could use this form with, and you could take this, and you could use the CSRF token outside of that um, form that it will generate a CSRF token. You could use that. We're gonna just do a div, but instead of doing one like this where we just write it all out ourselves, we're going to use a content tag div, and this way we can pass an ID as team form, and uh, we can do a few other options here. So what we're gonna do is we'll say do and close that tag close this off and we will have this that we can add in things like data attributes saying, well, here's one for the team and this should be at team to JSON or rather it's team to JSON. So we can convert the team to JSON and we can also do the same thing for the players attributes. Now, if you were to serialize the players inside of the team's JSON, which you could do, so you could say includes players. This is actually going to create an attribute or property on the JSON called players, but Rails needs us to submit players attributes for the accepts nested attributes for. So what we're going to do is we're not going to include players inside of the two JSON on this line. We're going to have a separate line here where we say team dot players uh, to JSON on its own line. So that's going to give us the ability then to uh, separate those out so that we can customize how they work and then we can go through and combine them inside of our JavaScript just as a setup thing so that we can make sure that the player's attributes name is the name of the property. Now you could have them all together and rename it in your JavaScript. I'm gonna do it this way so that we have them kind of separated out, um, but that is up to you how you wanna go about loading this data into your view app. 
So we can go back to our JavaScript portion here and we can change um, the way that our state gets loaded, our initial data, by doing something like var team equals, and I'm gonna use some code here, json.parse. Um, we're gonna parse the elements data set for team, so we can assume that it's gonna be a JavaScript object. So we can grab that uh, data attribute called team and parse that out. And we also have the player's attributes, which we can do the same thing on. And parse element dot data set dot players attributes, and we have to camel case that in order to access it properly. And then for this one, we wanna actually do something additional here, and we wanna do a for each, and here we take the player, and we want to player dot underscore destroy equals null so that we can set that up um, automatically so that all of these will have the underscore destroy. When we go and do an edit form, this will give us that uh, the underscore destroy property that we can monitor with view. If we don't have these ahead of time, view is not gonna be able to notice that we added a new property to our data set. So if we set this up ahead of time, it can monitor when this De, uh, destroy property gets triggered or modified. So we'll use that. And then last but not least, we'll say players attributes on team is gonna be equal to players attributes now that we've gone and set all of that up correctly. And then inside of our view app, we can say data is a function that returns um, team with the team variable and we are good to go. So that's gonna give us our initial data so that we can get things set up. And one modification that I want to make uh, into our HTML here is that I want to add uh, accept created at and updated at because we don't really need those attributes for our form and we're gonna do the same thing for the player's attributes. Um, this would have included all of that stuff and we don't really need those things. And the same thing goes for team ID. We already know the team's ID on this line. So when we are setting the data in our view app, we don't really need those. We can keep them. But of course, if you take this data and you submit it over to Rails, it's going to strong params all of these and say, well, it wasn't allowed for you to submit the team ID and the created that and updated that and so on. So we're gonna get rid of these. And the only one that we're gonna have that isn't allowed to be submitted is the team's ID, which we're going to use for the URL when we edit. So we will have one attribute that will be strong params, uh, no, no, unpermitted param, and that will be the team's ID. So this is gonna get rid of all those other ones that we don't want for our form. Now we've done a lot of setup so far, but we need to build out part of this form at least a little bit just to make sure that it works. So if we were to set team name as a label here, team name, label, and we do an input here, type equals text, um, we should be able to do something like vModel, team.name, which will connect our input to Vue.js's data, um, the state, the internal state of the Vue app, and this is gonna look for the team property, and inside of the team object, it's going to look for the name property, and so then this will automatically be populated with whatever's in the data set, and then if you were to edit this, it's going to update the data set in view and keep those in sync. So this is basically data bindings, if you're familiar with Angular, and that is how this is going to be connected. Of course, before we check this out in the browser, we need to make sure that we are loading our JavaScript pack tag for our team uh, editor form thing. So JavaScript pack tag is what you would add to um, your application HTML ERB, and then you wanna reference the file that you wrote your code in. In our case, we just put it in that hello view uh, JavaScript file. And so that is going to load this code right here that we have, um, of course, you should rename this to a better name so it's more descriptive of like the team form. Um, but that's gonna give us the ability for us to go in and check the uh, scripts here and we'll see that script helloview.js from port 8080 is being loaded because I am serving that from the Webpack dev server. 
If we go to new team, we'll see that we get this form and it actually will show up with or without uh, Vue.js. Now, what won't happen if you don't have Vue is you won't get this development mode view thing and I have the Chrome extension for view so we can click on that and it will highlight the elements on the page that are the view app and that is going to also show us the data set for that and if we were to type in here we will see that it automatically updates the team name and this is going to be how we can take the inputs map them to views data set and then we can take that data set pretty much verbatim and send that right over to Rails because we've designed this so that the team and players attributes and all this stuff map exactly to the way that Rails strong params is expecting us to send that stuff over. So what we've done is we've designed that JSON uh, to set up view to understand the exact same mapping that we need in Rails and that's gonna give us a really seamless way of building our nested forms and submitting that with XHR requests. So this is a start, we have the team name being set up and that is good. If we want to save this, we don't have the ability to do that yet, but first let's talk about adding players and building that out before we go and submit this to Rails. So let's go back to our template here and we get to use all of Vue.js's niceties here, which means that we can do something like, let's add a player section here. Let's go build a div that will be v4, all of the players, um, and we're gonna actually grab the index for the players while inside the team.players attributes state. So this is going to create a div that inside whatever template you define here is going to list out each one of those players. So if we were to say, um, we just print out the index here, this would give us the ability to uh, print out those, but of course we have no ability to add a new player, so none of this is really gonna be useful. So what we need is a button down here at the bottom, and we can do V on colon click, and this, we're also gonna do click.prevent so we can prevent it from, if you were to do this inside of a form or something, that would try to prevent the default option. So you can use that if you were doing the content tag or something inside of a form for. Um, it is up to you, but we want to add a method here for add player so that when you click this button, it will go and add a player to the page. So. We wanna give it a, t a name of add player and close off that button tag. And then down here we can add methods. And this will be an object that has those same names for your function, so add player. This will be a function that will simply push a new item onto team players attributes dot push and it will be an empty player. So basically we will have ID for this player is null because it doesn't have one. We'll give them a name of an empty string. And if you want to do other attributes like position, you can give them those as well. Now we're not using that in this case, so we're gonna comment that out. And then we also want that destroy as null because we want to keep this in sync with any of the existing records. So we'll have destroy as null as well um, to build that out. So if we go to our view app again. We should now be able to click add player and we can see that that index number is showing up and that means that we're successfully adding uh, items into the player's attributes array and you can see that right here. We see those and all of that is working correctly. Now of course this index by itself isn't terribly useful. We want to actually do a similar thing where we want to have um, the player name as a label and then we want to have an input type equals text and here we want v model equals player dot name now this is actually pretty smart because this is going to associate it to the correct player so when you edit one of these it's going to associate it to that player and then modify that player's name which is pretty cool so if we go back to our browser we add two players and we take a look at our data set for the player's attributes and we open these up so we can see their names. 
then you can type into the second one and that will get updated and the first one will get updated when you update that one. So the V4 stuff is actually pretty wise when you define this because then we can have our player names automatically associated with the correct one and we don't have to worry about you know, is it player with an index of whatever that we want to update? None of that, all of that is taken care of for us and that is pretty cool. Now we also need the ability for us to remove a player and we can do that by adding a similar button called remove. This will call the function remove player, but we can also pass in an index because we have that from this for loop. And then that means we can add a remove player method down here called that we can take the index of that and we can grab this.team.players attributes. So this function has access to the data set through this. Um, so then we can grab the team, the players attributes, and then we can call a splice method on here and take the index and remove uh, one element basically. So if we were to try this out in the browser, assuming we did everything correctly, we can have test, test, test and we can remove these so if we do um, numbers as well so you can see which ones we're removing it will correctly remove the correct item when you click the uh, associated button so we know that it's taking the index and it's removing the correct element out of view state which then goes and triggers re-rendering the form so I'm gonna cut this episode off here because we still have quite a bit to do where we want to be able to take this dynamic form that we've created and we wanna be able to persist that over to the database but we also wanna make sure that this works when you're editing an existing team, not just creating a new team. So there's a lot of intricacies to the editing that's different than the setup originally and we're gonna be able to build our view app that handles both, but I'm gonna do that in a part two of this episode because I don't want this one to be an hour long. So I hope you enjoyed this so far, and I'll see you in the next episode.